sources of evidence. And, uh, yeah, this is, I mean, you know, different types of evidence, but uh, where do you, where do you find the evidence? And, uh, starting off is really interesting. Um, oral statements from witnesses. Uh, now, you know, sometimes it's, it's evidence, uh, sometimes it's just investigation, uh, so, uh, you know, it depends on which stage you are, um, how careful you have to be, um, how certain you have to be of the evidence, of the reliability, and, and so forth, if it is going to be evidence rather than just information and direction for your own investigation. Uh, you know, we've, you know, looked at that, talked about that, but, uh, it's really interesting, though, starting out talking about witness statements, um, uh, we've talked about the rules of evidence, and I talked about best evidence, and it is considered, uh, sort of traditionally the best evidence. Uh, witness statements, witness testimony, oral testimony is considered the best evidence. And uh, when, you, when you understand psychology, when you have tried to interview uh, witnesses, you understand how difficult this is and and why is it that witness testimony which you know sometimes when you 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 know look at this you you're figuring you know this has got to be the worst evidence ever um but that's you know traditionally that is is regarded as the best evidence this is you know everything else um is not evidence of the event, it's evidence around the event, and and like I say, you know, business documents are considered a form of hearsay, not uh, actual evidence. And um, you know, why is it that people who are so bad at remembering things um, are, you know, as studies on on memory um, uh, indicate uh, fairly recently um, that. Uh, people don't remember that actually they are recreating the memories as as they recall things uh, from indications and and you know whatever partial uh, memories that we have um, when we try and recall we're actually not recalling we are rebuilding from you know very limited pieces of information. And so, um, it is astoundingly easy to get people to remember things that never happened. Uh, it's, you know, you, you talk to people, you know, and, and, and they give you a description of something and, and you just throw in a quick comment, well, but what about the guy with the green hat? Well, I don't remember a green hat. Oh, yeah, sure, you remember the guy, you know, in, 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 weird green hat, you know, and then all of a sudden, oh, yeah, I remember. And they are, because you have said something, they are building this green hat and some guy with the green hat into their memories. And from then on, they will remember the guy with the green hat. He will be part of an event, and he was never there in the first place. So, um, this is all very interesting, uh, but it does make it problematic in terms of, you know, sources of, uh, witness testimony. Um, now, um, we have, uh, touched on, I think, the, the difference between interviews, which is just gathering information, and interrogation, which is when you are interrogating, gathering information, gathering testimony, hopefully confession, from a suspect. 
Uh, so there are uh, different differences, and I think we'll go uh, into that um, in a bit. Um, we ask for written statements, and, and very often we uh, we go over um, uh, oral testimony first, uh, verbal uh, testimony, and then we ask people to write things down. Now, you have to be very careful because, as I say, of the, the possibility of contaminating evidence by saying something to someone which prompts them to recall something that um, they may not have seen. And um, when you, uh, you know, when, when you do that, um, uh, not only are you getting, you know, the wrong information, but it, it may present problems in court where um, you have prompted someone to remember something which they didn't actually witness. And their testimony conflicts with somebody else's testimony. And that uh, brings um, the overall testimony into disrepute. And, and therefore, uh, you know, jury is going to have difficulty, you know, okay, who do we trust? And, and, you know, maybe both of them are lying, so we're not going to trust either of them. Uh, that type of thing. So you have to be very uh, careful. And um, we can then uh, ask people to do an original statement on a written basis. What do you remember? Please write it down um, without us uh, prompting or uh, questioning them. And so without interfering with it. Um, now, as I, as I say, you know, any computer-generated material um, it automatically falls into this um, business document, uh, possible hearsay category, and, and we need to uh, be careful of that and, and support it uh, if we're going to do it. But um, we do have uh, visual, uh, video recording sound, audio recordings um, uh, and again you know do we have these recordings during the event um, after the event getting uh, uh, people's react well people's reactions is, is one thing but also uh, looking at the aftermath again um, going into a crime scene uh, videotaping uh, taking pictures um, to show what was there in the aftermath, which can give us some indications of what happened and how it happened. Um, so, during the event, after the event, uh, both start sorts of information that are uh, working there. And all the different types of, of forensic evidence, which we also have been collecting.